Welcome to How to Catch. In this brand new series, I will be showing you how to catch different species from a boat. In this video, I will be talking about conger eels. At the end of this film, you will know where to locate the conger eel, when you can expect to catch the conger eel, how to tie two different eel rigs, what baits to use, and what rod and reel combos I suggest. Here goes. Okay, so as always, we start off by showing you where to locate uh, these conger eels. Now, this part is just uh, west of Isle of Wight. We've got Isle of Wight down there, and uh, then we've got Christchurch here. So, conger eels. Now, for about May to September, they generally will be found uh, on the reefs uh, in shore. So you don't have to go out too far to find them. Uh, and again, these aren't my marks, I'm just saying where you probably would have a bit of luck finding them. Now, Christchurch Ledge, this is an area where it's surrounded by a lot of reef and rough ground, which you can see just here. Now, where there's sand and there's rough ground, it's perfect to anchor on because here, if you have got a flooding tide, the fl flooding tide will be running from the west or going to the east, which obviously means you can stick your anchor in on the sand and you could probably fish this uh, this reefy area here. Now, I would imagine there'd be some conger eels around here uh, on, the, on the reef. Uh, now, when you're anchoring a big reef like this, you can anchor that in a small tide, you can anchor that in a medium tide. Um, obviously, I don't personally anchor in spring tides, it's just a little bit too much and you need a bit too much weight to hold bottom. But Rex, uh, we'll go on to them a little bit later on, they need neap tides to anchor on. So if you're wanting to try for conger eels and you've got a medium tide or a small tide, I would personally go and try a bit of reefy rocky area, a bit of rough ground uh, between the May and September time. That's generally uh, when they're going to be a little bit more inshore uh, and you don't have to go too far to catch them. Another place which I located, which I think would be quite good, just over here, just to the east of Dolphin Bank. We can see just here, there is another little bit of, uh, of rough ground. We can see all the rough ground here. Now that, again, would be perfect to anchor on because guess what? We've got some lovely sand here. So we can anchor that on a, um, an ebbing tide, which is when the tide's going out. So it's going from the east to the west. Uh, so we could quite easily anchor up here and we could fish into this uh, on, a tar on an ebbing tide. And then when the tide moves, we can go around the reef and we can stick our pick in around here, uh, our anchor around here. And then we can fish the flooding tide as well. So that's quite a nice little bit, which I reckon between uh, May and September, that, that would most likely hold, hold conger eels. Now then, in October to February, uh, a lot of eels will move to some offshore wrecks. Now, wrecks will hold eels all year round. However, the best time to fish them, I have found, personally, is between October and February. That's generally when the big ones get caught, and uh, that's when you want to go out to your offshore wrecks. So I'm going to come out here and just f f try and find a nice big wreck which uh, which I think would be good for eel fishing. I don't believe they've got any relief shading on them. Nope. Let's try the Borgny. Again, I've never fished these, so they're not necessarily going to be marks. That is not really... Oh, that's a tiny little one. Probably not very good to fish that one. Now, when you're wreck fishing, you need to be fishing on a neap tide um, in order to be able to anchor it safely. Um, and when you're looking for a wreck to, to anchor on, you want the real, you really want that wreck to be facing north to south. So it's going north, 
to south and the tide's coming across so that it's much easier to, to anchor. If you've got a, a wreck, which to be honest with you, I can't see many here with a relief shading, unfortunately. I'm trying to give an example. Okay, so this is a very small one. However, it does sort of sit north to south. So you could quite easily anchor it and the boat should be facing that way on a flooding tide. So you should be able to fish that quite well. And then obviously you'd nip around there when the tide wants to air, you put your anchor in there and you'd be fishing it pretty much uh, on the other side. So you want small, neap tides, small, nice small tides to uh, to anchor wrecks. And that, that's when I would suggest, say between October and February, you wanna go out to these wrecks, uh, probably a bit further out as well. Uh, big, deep, deep areas, big offshore wrecks uh, to try and find those bigger, uh, bigger fish. So there's another one just there. That's a proper offshore wreck, that one. That's about, looks like about seven or eight miles off of the uh, the Isle of Wight. That is a nice big wreck, as you can see from the relief shade in there. It sits north to south, so it's nice and easy to anchor either side of it. What you don't want is the wreck sitting, as I say, uh, east to west. It makes it very, very hard to anchor. So that is where you locate your conger eels. Just to recap, between May, September, best to fish uh, reef and rough ground. And then from October to February, those, those offshore wrecks uh, is probably where you're going to find the big the big girls, you know, the sort of 50 pound plus eels, hopefully on a nice big wreck in the uh, middle of the channel. Okay then, so we've learned where to locate the eels at the different times of year. So let's take a look at what rigs to use in the certain situations. I want to show you two different rigs and uh, tell you the pros and cons of using those rigs. Well, quite a few components here. Don't feel overwhelmed, you don't need all of them. Uh, what you will need is you will need some sort of 80 pound, 100 pound leader material to make your zip slider leader. You'll need a quick link or a coast link swivel to attach to your main line. You will need a hook of your choice. Mine are Catfish Pros. Generally speaking, uh, they're very, very nice hooks for eels. Or if you prefer a J hook, you've got the Limitless Apex XTs. You're gonna want some beads, some rig tubing, doesn't have to be glow in the dark, and some very strong, big swivels. Now, a conger eel rig. Um, what we're gonna show you first is a running ledger rig. Uh, very, very effective, probably the best rig uh, to catch conger eels on, um, but it's not so great on a wreck and it can get a bit snagged up. So this can be best for uh, mixed ground and light reef as well. So first of all, we're gonna make our running ledger. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to grab your 80 pound, 100 pound lead line, whichever one you choose to use. You want to grab a bead, place that through there. Then you want to put on your zip slider, which holds on your weight. Then you want to put on another bead. And all those beads do is they protect your knots. Never used to use them, but I do now. And then you want to tie on your quick link just like so and i'm going to use a grinner as i always do and that quick link will enable you to attach your trace to really quickly and easily so if you get a damaged hook or lots of abrasion on the lot on your trace your hook trace and you can very quickly chop and change it so done the notch i'm going to moisten that one tie it up there we go Take the tag end off, and as I always do, I just leave, I always just leave a few mil, like so. So we've got link clip tied on, we've got a bead, your zip slider, another bead, and then I would go and pull off about two foot off your leader line reel, and then just chop there. And then the other end, tie on a very strong power swivel. Again, I'm just going to use a grid and up. Just going to go and moisten that and get that back here. Like so, pull that down, pull that tight, and slip off the end. And that is it. So you can make up absolutely 
uh, loads of these. Um, I've got about 10, 15 in my in my tackle box, and that is just enabling you to use a running ledger. So obviously your weight, this is a very large one, <laughs> your weight would connect onto there, like so. That enables to swing up and down, so that sits on the seabed, for example. That's going up to your main line. Your rig's attached to here. The running ledger enables there to be very little friction. So that conga picks up your bait over here on your hook trays, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and it allows it to take it away without any friction. But the problem is, if you're fishing this on a wreck, it gives it a long time until you feel that indication, the bite indication. That is why a running ledger isn't necessarily the best on, on a wreck. Sometimes you might want to shorten your length of, of line here. You might want to have that swivel about there. You've got a little bit of free, free sort of take, but you're going to feel that bite quicker. So let's just move on to making the, uh, the hook trace for this setup. Now, the hook trace couldn't really be much simpler. You need a power swivel or any swivel of your choosing, just make sure it's a strong one. You need your chosen hook. I'm using a Tenno Catfish Pro limitless hook. And I like to use a little bit of rig tubing and I'll explain why in a minute. And you'll also need your choice of rig material. I only use for congas 200 pound, very, very thick mono. Um, and that's good because it's got a lot of abrasion resistance. So let's tie it up. Okay then, so to tie the rig, all we're gonna do is we're gonna pop on our hook with a grinner knot. That is a Tenno catfish hook. Now these hooks for conger eels are actually gonna be fantastic um, because they're slightly offset. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you'll be able to see that there. There you go. You've got a lot more chance of hooking it just because of that offset. Match fishermen seem, always seem to offset their hooks and it does make a big, big difference. So with this 200 pound mono, we're just gonna do a three turn grinner. You do not need to do anything more than that. You could probably get away with two, but I'm going to do three. I've caught skate 277 pound using this three turn grinner and 200 pound line. I know it doesn't go anywhere. Tighten it, semi tighten it. That's got to be moistened now. I'm going to pull it down, making sure it just tightens up nicely. There we go. And I'll cut the tag end again, leaving about a centimeter and a half, I suppose. Like so. So you've just got a hook and 200 pound line. Cut off about two foot from your reel. Now this is usually where I'd thread on some rig tubing. And what that helps with is the abrasion. It just gives a little bit extra um, abrasion resistance around the, the bite area. So you'd have about, I don't know, four inches on there of rig tubing. Now that rig tubing actually is uh, too thin of a diameter. It won't fit over this 200 pound line. But um, I will order some and I'll get some and I'll put a little bit on my traces. But for now, let's not worry about that. We can still carry on. Other end, just tie on your swivel. Again, just using a free turn grinner. There you go. Just make sure it all tightens up here. Uh, sometimes the big thick line doesn't always tighten and it loops over the swivel, which is obviously no good. And then that is your trace done. Um, it's so, so simple. Uh, that's literally just a hook and, and a swivel. And then your swivel would, uh, would come up to your running ledger, as we said earlier. And that would just click over your link clip and slide in like that. So starting from up here, you'd have your swivel going on to another link clip on your main line, a bead, you'd have your zip slider, another bead just to protect the knot, then you've got your other link clip, and then you've got your hook trace. And on there, you could mount your bait. So that is a running ledger, um, great, great rig, really effective, best done over light mixed ground, um, and not so much in a wreck. You can use it in a non-snaggy wreck or if you pull just off of the wreck and you're fishing just before you get into it. Um, but I'm now gonna show you a rig which is slightly better uh, fished on a wreck. So just like Blue Peter, this is what I made earlier and we'll run through the rig setup very shortly. But it's a swivel 
weight at the bottom and it's got a hook and a swivel which runs up and down it. Now, let's imagine this is fishing on the bottom on your, and you're on your wreck like so, okay? And you've got a very short, and it's very important, you've got a very short six to eight inch hook length. Mr. Congo comes along, he grabs the, 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 the bait and he pulls it. There you go, you're getting your bite indication immediately. That Congo has got no time to go, goodbye, I'm gonna go back into my hole. You've got a straight bite indication, you strike straight away, pull up, pull up, pull up, and get that Congo out of the wreck. All right, so this rig is exceptionally good for when fishing on a wreck, a really snaggy wreck, and you wanna hit, see that bite indication immediately to strike into it straight away. So with that running ledger I showed you just before, it's not so good because they, they can go sort of a couple of foot into their hole and layer. Well this, they can only go about six inches and you've got a bite indication immediately to strike up and get it out. Right, so for the wreck rig, let's say, we're gonna need some beads. We're gonna need some very strong swivels again, those SS power swivels, and your choice of hook. Again, I'm gonna be using a Tenno Catfish Pro from Limitless. Right, so first things first, you wanna cut two pieces of your chosen leader material. Now this is 200 pound, that is all I use on my on my conga rigs. Basically, basically you want two bits of two foot. So first things first, go ahead and tie a big double overhand knot. So like that, and this is basically just gonna hold the weight. Now, this is why I like to use 200 pounds, because every time you put in something like this, it does weaken the mono, um, but if it's 200 pounds, it's even this might take it to 100 pounds, it's still gonna be very, very strong. So I'm gonna come away from camera, I'm gonna pull that tag end with my teeth and make sure it all tightens up nicely. All right, so there's my double overhand loop. I'm just gonna cut off that tag end. With, with the big heavy stuff, I do generally leave a little bit longer. So I'm gonna leave about two centimeters there, all right? Like so. And then what we'll do is we'll put the weight on there now just so you know what it does. So again, get the weight, you pop it through like that. And then that loop just goes over the weight. So the weight's got, the loop has got to be big enough to get over that weight and then it just sits like that. So that's your weight sorted. You then come to the top of your 200 pound mono. You thread on a bead, so one of those. And then you put on a big power swivel, just like so. And then you put on another bead. And there we go, that all goes on. And then you wanna tie on just with a free turn grinner your swivel and obviously that swivel will go onto your main line link clip or coast link swivel whatever you're using so that's all tightened I'm just going to take off my tag end again leaving a little bit so now we've got well i always want to call it the rig body i suppose you've got the weight down here you've got your swivel up there and then you've got your swivel coming off here so what we need to do now is tie on 200 pound line to this, and then your hook. Now again, you don't want to make your hook length long here. The whole point of it is that it's short and you get a very quick bite indication. If you make it long, that will sort of ruin the uh, <laughs> ruin the object of this rig. So, free turn grinner. As you can see, that's all tightened. So I'm gonna take the sag end off. Again, leaving it enough there. So, yeah, perfect, that knot's going nowhere. You wanna come down and tie on your hook. Again, you could put some uh, rig tubing on before you put your hook on, just to give it that bit more abrasion resistance. And if it's glow in the dark, you never know, it might entice a bite. Again, you don't want to have a very long hook trace here. It just needs to be long enough to get your bait on and give it, and give it you know, a good, three or four inches away from the rig body. You don't want any more than that, really. One, two, and three. I'm just gonna tighten that down like so. Okay, lovely. Oh, lovely and tight. Right, cut that. And then that's your other rig done. So for the sake of you seeing this rig work, I've just moved the camera up 
you've got your weight at the bottom, hook trace is there, and as I say, you can just, as soon as that moves, you're in. So it's not too long. That's probably longer than I'd normally have it, but sometimes the baits are quite big. So look at that. you're gonna see that bite indication immediately and you can strike straight away and pull it out of the wreck. So that is one of the best ways of catching congers on a wreck. So what baits do we use for conger reels? Well, fresh mackerel and fresh pouting is my favorite conger bait, especially fresh mackerel. They absolutely love it. It's nice and soft. They can eat it with ease and they just seem to go mad for it. My second favorite, now other people might say cuttlefish, but my second favorite is a flappered up fresh wreck pouting. The congers down there are living off them pouting. They know that they're food. You put a fresh one down there and they, they normally nail it quite quickly. So my PB is actually on, is on a fresh pouting. So it's one of, one of my favorite baits. So mackerel pouting. You can obviously also use cuttlefish. You can use squid, bluey, any fish bait. <laughs> they'll, they'll take it. They're not fussy. Um, but my top three then are going to be mackerel, flappered up fresh wreck caught pouting. And I'll say third, probably cuttlefish. So the last part of the video then, what rod and reels to use? Well, a 30 to 50 pound class rod is gonna do most of your conger work. You want a nice, strong rod. 30 to 50 pounds class is fine. Uh, you want at least uh, 80 pound braid on your main line. And then you want a nice, strong, uh, sort of 100 pound, 150 pound rubbing leader as well because if you're fishing into a wreck or a reef you don't want that braid touching any of that uh, rock or metal work from the ship because it will just part so you want a nice strong braid um, i use uh, at least 80 pounds uh, i like to fish strong that's just how i fish for congers for big ones that's generally what i fish for I try and fish for the large ones anyway it doesn't always work but um yeah nice strong braid you want a length of rubbing leader attached to that braid, uh, again, about between 80, 100 pounds, and then obviously you, you put on your, your, your trace. Um, if you're gonna go for those massive eels, you know, 80 pound plus eels, I actually quite like using my 80 pound class roller rods with massive pen center to 90 reels. It's 150 pound braid on it, and I can just conk them out. If there's a big fish down there, it's well hooked, and it's not absolutely snagged in that wreck i know that i'm going to catch it so i do go a little bit over gunned when i'm going big offshore conger eel fishing well that's that then i hope you've enjoyed the video it's going to be quite a long one because i've put two different rigs in um if you enjoyed it give it a comment give it a like obviously subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you've got any questions please let us know all of the links to all of the products that i've used in the video apart from the monos are, are going to be linked below so if you do want to check it out please feel free have a great week and thank you for watching how to catch conger eels from a boat